Welcome to XAML Inform tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to implement in-app purchase in our XAML Inform iOS. So to implement in-app purchase, first of all, I will recommend you everyone to uh, please follow the XAML Inform documentation how to implement the in-app purchase in our XAML Inform. So it is very simple. So we before implementing in a purchase we have to do some basic configurations so uh, once we do the basic configuration we can add our product to our app store after that once we implement our code to our xamarin form then we will use the in a purchase item so first of all i am showing you one by one so first of all, once we are logging to appstoreconnect.apple.com with our credential and after that, so uh, first of all, um, the free apps will be available for add. We don't need any information to set up, but for paid application, we need to add the tax and bank information. So by default, free apps are always allowable. and for paid applications, once we add the tax information from this tax tab and banking information from this banking tab. So after adding tax and banking information here and after accepting the terms and condition from Apple, we can able to add the paid application. So after getting the access of paid applications, we can add our purchase item inside our app store connect then we can implement our code in our xamarin form okay so now i'm going to show you how to create an application so that we can purchase this app purchase this item from our mobile app okay so uh, for doing this i'm going to developer.apple.com so here i am going to my app store connect and i am navigating to app store connect so for testing we don't need to upload our application binary we can test it but for production we cannot use the test uh, test item inside our production environment okay so here is our application so okay so once we create an application to our app store connect by filling some information and by providing our package name so we have to go select our application and in in the detail view here we have a in-app purchase option in the future so here i'm clicking on in-app purchase so in a purchase we can add multiple items but remember that every item need a unique product id so here i am creating a product id based on my package name so he here my package name is com.dcsmobile.ios and after that putting a dot and i am adding the name of my item so here I have two items that is calendar one and calendar two. So remember that product ID should be unique for every item. So once we click on this plus icon, we can able to create an product. So you have to select the type here. So for in-app purchase, we have to select either consumable or non-consumable. Okay. So here maximum time we use non-consumable means that are not consumable consumable means that product we can use but non-consumable means it is a digital product so it can be available in our application like you want to add some services suppose some coaching services and some extra features for some application so that is the reason we use non-consumable here so here once i click on the non-consumable so based on your configuration and your requirement you can use consumable or non-consumable okay so here i am clicking on non-consumable so a as my product is non-consumable and we have to put a reference name you can put any reference name suppose calendar one 
and product ID. So product ID should be unique. So com dot BCS mobile and calendar three dot iOS dot calendar three. So this is my I have put an extra dot. So this is my product ID. And once we click on create icon, it will create a product. Okay. So after that, it will open the detail view of that product so that we can add some more information like the price tire and we can set the description and few things like category. So here you can see that available is cleared for sale and here is the reference name. What is the this name can be uh, is available to show inside our store kit API. So what is store kit API? I will uh, discuss you in detail later on okay so uh, after that we have to select the price schedule so once we click on the plus icon we have to choose the price tire here so whatever price tire you have uh, here in this listed we have to select it from here okay and we can click the start date and end date if we choose it is for particularly specific period of time so we can use it okay so after that uh, here i have we have to select the tax category and so here i have selected match to parent app and um, here we have to add the localization localization means suppose if you, your application is showing in multiple country you want to show your application name and description in different localized uh, text so that is the reason uh, by language so we have to add the localization here so this application only uh, for us so i have added only single localization if you have multiple localization then you can add it multiple localization okay after that this is the store permission promotion icon we can use it but it, it is this is optional totally and we have to add a uh, screenshot here of our product then we have some review notes and once we click on save it will save our item okay so, but remember for testing purpose suppose our application is not uploaded so before that we can use any of the uh, uh, created uh, purchase item and we can access that purchase item by our product id but if our application is uploaded to the production then we cannot use the uh, previous purchase item so we need the approval from the app store so once we upload our application binary then once our application is approved then the app store team will approve our in-app purchase product then we can able to purchase it in production environment so that's it for creation of the in-app purchase item in app store okay so now we are going to implement how to use our xamarin form ios and how we can implement our in-app purchase in xamarin form ios so i'm opening visual studio so uh, the code is very pretty simple so uh, inside my in-app purchase folder inside my project ios project i have created apple purchase services.cs class so uh, this class is implemented from the purchase service class so if i go to the uh, purchase service class this is an interface okay so uh, we have two method one is get prices and one is buy native okay so this get prices we have created this method for that we have to pass the product id so whatever product id we have created inside our app store connect for our item we have to pass it as a list of id and we have to pass so for and for purchasing the application i am passing the purchase class so this purchase class have only few uh, information like the uh, price id a native object description and localized title okay so now how we are going to implement this so uh, we have two method one is get prices so this get prices method is responsible for returning the specified items whatever we have sent inside the ids so this is a uh, string array so here i have passed two 
items like calendar 1 and calendar 2 whatever i have created in my in purchase item uh, app store connect so i have to pass these ids here so once we uh, request for the item it will uh, request to the store kit api so basically in app purchase will work with store kit api basically we have implemented like sk product request and we are passing the na set that is the ids is a arrays okay and it is uh, once we request this we have to wait for the response because this is a asynchronous process so once we hit this function it will wait for the response so uh, we have to do one thing so we have to create a class and we have to implement a um, class that called sk product request delegate okay so and uh, here we have implemented a functions few things like uh, um, overhead function of receive response this response function is responsible for getting the uh, product response okay so whatever product we have requested to get the details from the app store connect using store kit api this receive response overhead function callback will be called as a response so once we call this get prices function by passing some ids arrays ids okay of the item then we uh, this receive response will call here we we will receive our product okay suppose uh, currently i have two product that created in app store connect so that two product will be response uh, return in this function okay so here i have created a for each loop and i am adding some information in my class so i have a purchase class created by me here and i have i am adding few information like product identifier this is um, the actual product id and the product price product object and localized description localized title this is a title localized title and this is a localized description okay so uh, once i get the details of these product i directly send it using the messaging sender dot sends and you can see that inside my portable project here uh, i have a mm, function uh, that is i was purchase page okay so this is my view model i am going to view model it is directly calling this uh, messaging center so you can check that uh, uh, populate so uh, here is my function so uh, this function is uh, res responsible for receiving all the products here and and i am showing this product detail, uh, details as a pro product observable collection and this observable collection i am showing to the view okay so uh, so this is my product uh, product observable collection that is uh, that is visible in my list view so uh, and i am opening my list view here so this is my list view that is containing the localized title and localized description here and uh, i am uh, populating the product details okay so that is for getting the product details by by passing the product id using store kit api okay and how to purchase this item so uh, we have to implement this by uh, so here is my buy native function we have to pass the product id so basically i have uh, passed the pr uh, product class whatever we uh, we have prepared for getting the product details from store kit api so we are passing that product and then inside this if we go to native function so here is my uh, native function it is also using the uh, store kit api so here i am creating a product information as a native object and uh, here we are creating a payment object here and um, here we have created a tax object received here and um, and we we have added the payment purchase as a queue sk payment queue so once we add this item as a payment queue it will generally open for the purchase pop-up from our mobile so once user paid from their uh, credit card debit card whatever then it will automatically um, call a callback of update transaction 
so this observer delicate uh, class is implemented from sk payment trans transaction observer and here we have a another override method of updated transaction so here inside this updated transaction so once the transaction is completed it will um, call automatically this callback and it will show the transaction is successed or failed or purchased and anything so uh, suppose here are few uh, transaction state that is failed purchased restored what is restored suppose if you want to purchase a item that you already purchased before and if you want to purchase it for the second time then it will call the restored option and uh, this failed if you uh, the transaction is failed then it will call this transaction failed state and if you are purchasing purchasing for the first time then it will call this case okay so once this purchase is successful from here it will i am uh, again calling a messaging center dot send store kit purchase response so based on this response what we are doing we are doing whatever we want to do as per the payment suppose if you want to save the payment information in our database we can do it but that is the implementation of the in-app purchase okay so here you can see that uh, this is pretty simple in-app purchase service class here so that are implementing get prices and buy native function okay so that's it for the in-app purchase so how in-app purchase is working in the mobile application i'm showing you here okay so here is my two items so uh, once i click on this uh, buy button and click on yes so basically um, it will open directly this pop-up and uh, if i verified this uh, payment it will automatically deduct the money from my account and the transaction will be success so now i am not doing this so because this is already in the production environment so so i am not doing this now so for testing purpose once we do it inside the sandbox testing we have to create a sandbox user to create a sandbox account we have to go to our app store connect and then uh, we have to go our uh, applications okay so once we go to our applications and uh, we click on our application so there we can create the sandbox user okay so uh, here Mm, it's my application so uh, it is loading my screen okay okay so uh, so here I am going to test flight and here uh, we can add our user for testing so uh, here is my uh, internal testing so we have to add um, a tester here so once we um, create the tester from here and we uh, once we send the invite for the tester then we can test using our sandbox account so that's for era purchase if you have any query you can comment below and thank you for watching have a great day